Good afternoon, everybody. Here we are with our next installment on the, the Gardner engine story. We're going to talk about the injector pump, which I myself find really very interesting, and I hope you do too. I'm going to try and explain it to you as simple as I possibly can. The injector pump is divided into two parts. First of all, we've got the pump tops here. Then we've got what's known as the cam box. Cam mean, meaning cams which are rotating. And at the back end here, we've got the governor. Now, this is from a five cylinder engine, so it's got two pump tops. Uh, a three cylinder or a two cylinder would only have one pump top. Um, the pump gets its energy or gets its drive from this shaft here, um, which is engaged in the gear mechanisms at the front of the engine and ultimately driven by the timing chain going around here. So we've got a couple of objectives in an injector pump. Um, we want to give the engine fuel at precisely the right time, uh, but we don't want to give it too much fuel, otherwise the revs will be too high. The more fuel uh, a diesel engine gets, the more power it develops. So how is this achieved? This shaft rotates in here, and the shaft has got cams on it, which you'll see here in this example. Now this is off a six cylinder, but you'll see the cam here. So as that shaft's rotating, the cam in here is forcing a plunger up, and essentially that delivers the diesel up to here, into the injector pipe, and into the engine. The faster this is going round, uh, the more fuel is being delivered per minute. Okay. All right, this chap here, as you'll see, has got a helical groove in it. And what it boils down to is, as that rotates inside the pump top, it governs the amount of fuel that the engine is getting. Now, we can see here, in this pump top. That's how that works. Okay. So this element here, this item, is called the rack. And it must be feather free inside there. If it's stuck in any way, uh, the, the pump won't work at all. It'll be, it'll be un, ungovernable. So that little chap there is rotating in there with the position of the throttle. And that controls the amount of fuel that the engine gets. Um, the timing of the pump is determined by the position of these cams here. Now, this is an LW from an LW engine, and there isn't a lot of control over the timing. We just have to line that up. We have to line up this, this gear here at the front of the engine, and after that, um, the pump <coughs> is set up automatically. OK, um, so the rack moves back and forward like this, as you can see. Left to its own resources, uh, the pump would just run away. What happens on the shaft here is, as the shaft is rotating, these weights fly out. And as they fly out, they move this, this, um, this item here towards the back of the engine. In doing that, they move a little bar in here, which moves this arm, which forces the rack this way. So I find that really quite intriguing and really quite beautiful. We have a spring at the back here. I'm not too sure if you can show that. This spring is encouraging the rack to go this way, to go aft towards the back of the engine, that way, yes. <clears throat> but <clears throat> these weights, <clears throat> whenever these weights fly out, <clears throat> As I said, they <coughs> bring this item out, <coughs> which is bringing that out, which is forcing the rack back this way. So that's a balance in the equation there. It's a kind of a feedback system. We've really got a little engine within an engine here. <coughs> now, <coughs> again, inside the governor, there's a large spring here. So as the weights fly out, the spring is located there like that, see? this spring is stopping the weights from flying out. But if we can somehow compress that spring, and it really is a very strong spring, it really is quite difficult to compress this. If we can compress this spring, we will give the rack more, more freedom. It can move on ahead out. I hope you understand that. So really you've got 
two springs fight, fighting against each other here. You have this spring here at the back, which is pulling the rack this way, and you have the weights forcing the rack the other way, but the weights have to overcome the force in this spring. If we can compress this spring, we can give the rack more freedom. And we compress the spring by moving this lever here, which is the throttle. As you can see, look, we have this another cam here, which is forcing this forked member down like that and forcing that spring in. I hope you get that now. So that's all it boils down to, really. We force that spring in, which allows the rack to come back more, and the, the RPM of the engine will go up. If we to strangle the engine, we simply pull, push the rack forward like that. And that can be done remotely then via this lever here, which turns like that and does the same job. As the engine comes under load, the engine is inclined to slow down, which means that the weights will then <coughs> relax more, they'll move in, and the rack will move back to deliver more power. So it's really a very beautiful uh, equilibrium here once the whole thing has settled down. And you will see in a gardener, you will see that very often this is moving a tiny little bit as those two forces fight against each other. Now, we've got latching levers here. And we can pull these latching levers down. We can see that element moving up there as, as before. And we can latch them down completely. That means that this cylinder here on the engine is, complete, is not getting any fuel. It's disabled. And in this way, we can latch them down in different sequences, and we can isolate uh, cylinders that are giving bother. Uh, and we can, we can also establish is she firing on every single cylinder. She'll even run with just one on one cylinder uh, with a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, throttle. OK, um, that's about it, I'm afraid. It's as simple as that. Oh, these vessels here are air vessels. Uh, the fuel comes in here under pressure or here, or it can come in here, wherever. So you've got um, a reservoir of fuel and air in here, and that just keeps the fuel supply to the injector pump nice and steady. It's not changing abruptly. Um, that's it. It's wonderful.